We are yeah, going to record Kevin. this. Um, hi, Kevin. Um, we are recording this, so we'll make it available for anybody who can't, uh, who isn't able to join us in person. Um, and uh, Chris March here will, will help me get that link out to you. So uh, hello, everybody, again. Uh, this is Tom Mayer. I'm the data editor at Thunderdome. I'm glad you could join us. Um, what I'd like to do today is just take, um, I think this we could probably do this in about 45 minutes, maybe a little bit faster, but talk to you about Document Cloud and explain to you um, a, a little bit about what it is and show you some of, the, some of its best features um, and give you a, a sense of how you might be able to use it uh, in your newsroom and, and on projects you're working on. Um, so at the outset, uh, I, what I'd like to get a sense of is if there are any questions you have um, coming into this that you want me to, to be sure to talk about. Um, or, or have, have any of you used Document Cloud before, or, or do you have any, uh, any experience or questions we should tackle? No, I don't Has, think we, any of us have used it. OK. Have you all heard about it before? Do you, do you know anything yeah. about, about the project? OK. And yeah, you, I had been on a webinar previously, but I never had an opportunity to use it. OK. And you, do you use Scribd there? Uh, I do. I don't know if others do. OK. Yeah, I've used Scribd before. OK. Um, and when, when you use Scribd, what do you generally, uh, what, is, what does that look like? What uses do you, do you make of it? Is it just for publishing a, a picture or a PDF or, or a... I usually I use it to upload PowerPoints and then embed those. Um, so we, when we're holding workshops at our media lab, so people can um, see the PowerPoints will be embedded in an article page along, along with like um, the the live chat or in the live chat and. Um, I might embed it in that if I'm doing like a scribble live chat, but. Okay. Um, that's pretty much how I've used it to upload PowerPoints. And then we, we were also doing our front pages for a while, so we'd upload our front page to that. As a PDF of the front page layout? Yeah, and then use it as a teaser, like a day before the print comes out. Say, check sure. out our front page in advance, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, all right. Well, that's, that's really helpful for me. Um, so just to start off, I want to talk very briefly about Scribd. Um, and uh, to be fair, it's not something that I've used a lot of, um, mostly because I've been using Document Cloud for uh, almost four years now. Um, Scribd uh, is, so forget it, whatever you know about Document Cloud you've heard, let's set that aside for a second. Um, it's Scribd essentially, in this analogy that's gonna be a little forced, is kind of like an old Yugo, like it runs, um, it kind of does what you might need it to, but it doesn't really, uh, it's not going to wow you uh, in any case. And uh, Document Cloud, on the other hand, is kind of like a supersonic fighter jet. Um, Document Cloud does a lot of things uh, really, really well. And it, I'm going to walk you through some of the features that you probably haven't heard of or might not have thought about using for journalism. Um, but that could be really powerful um, primarily in your reporting, but also in the presentation of your stories. Um, so I don't want it to be, this is a little unfair, uh, I'll admit, because Scribd is perfectly fine for what it does and what it's meant to be. And my understanding is that Scribd was originally a platform for eBooks. It was a way for people to distribute eBooks. I don't think it was ever intended deliberately as a use case for journalists to publish pictures or static images or PDFs. Um, but it's something that's, that's common. Like a lot of people have started using it for that, um, you know, all over the country, um, mostly because it's there and it's, um, it's relatively easy to use. But I, I don't want this to be a comparison between the two because I think Document Cloud is going to serve a lot of different needs um, than Scribd. And the ones where they do overlap, I just think personally Document Cloud's a lot stronger. Um, so. I'll talk a little bit about Document Cloud. Document Cloud was made for journalism. Scribd, like I said, it was like an ebook platform. Document Cloud was um, conceived and designed um, with journalists and reporters and editors at newspapers uh, um, from the outset. Um, 
So I'll give you a little bit of history, uh, just a brief overview. This was a project that started as a collaboration between the New York Times and ProPublica. Um, some editors at those two publications, and in this picture, the guy on the right is a guy named Aaron Pilhofer. He's the, uh, I think he's the editor, system managing editor of News Interactives at the New York Times, and he was one of the founders of Document Cloud. Um, but they wanted something that would allow investigative journalists to host uh, electronic repositories of documents, scanned um, documents um, for projects and to share them across uh, investigations between newsrooms um, and to do a lot of the things that normally we would do by you know, making photocopies and printing out thousands of pages of documents and taking a highlighter and post-it notes and sort of going through by hand to analyze it. Um, so they got this idea together, the two newsrooms worked on it, and they got uh, the first of several grants from the Knight Foundation and their news challenge. So this was paid for with the foundation money. And the guy on the left is um, named Jeremy Ashkenaz, who was the original lead developer for, the, for Document Cloud and then went on to work for the New York Times um, and is a really um, really smart, uh, smart guy, developer and a journalist. Um, so the two of them, uh, the two newsrooms and with Jeremy leading development created this tool. So uh, why is this so special? Um, the biggest issue, like I said, is that it's for journalists and it's only available to journalists. Um, this is not a commercial product. It is um, ho housed now at investigative reporters and editors in Columbia, Missouri. The, the lead developer now works there. Um, this is, uh, no other kind of industry can actually use Document Cloud. It's deliberately made for us. Um, and it's a grant-funded tool um, to make our jobs as watchdog journalists, in particular, a lot easier. Um, and it's free, which is always nice, right? It's, uh, we don't have to pay anything to use it, um, but we get a lot of features that are really exceptional. So at any point while I'm talking, if you have any questions, just holler. Um, if you want to put something in the chat window, also, uh, Chris March is keeping an eye on that. Unfortunately, with my window open right now in this full screen, I can't see it, but um, I'm happy to answer questions uh, as they come up. Um, so I've talked a little bit about the history of Document Cloud, and I've talked about why it's unique, um, but let me talk about what it can do uh, briefly, and then we'll get into it, and I'll show you uh, some of its features. Organization is kind of the, the big thing, and, and this is, um, it lets you house um, thousands or even hundreds of thousands of pages of documents um, electronically in, a, in the cloud, essentially. Uh, and it, it lets you organize those and share them um, with one another. But for nothing else, if you're a very document keen investigative reporter, hopefully this can help you eliminate the piles and piles and piles of court records and transcripts and FOIA requests that you've uh, got hidden under your desk and crammed in every filing cabinet in the newsroom. Um, th this is a great place for, for all of that. Um, it lets you annotate. Uh, you can go into these electronic documents and put your notes in there from the reporting. You can put them in privately um, so that uh, only you can have access. As you're assembling your story, you can make notes to yourself about other interviews or, or other sources that you're dealing with. Um, and when you're ready to publish, you can choose which of those notes you want to make public. Um, you can put the document on your website and say, I put 30 highlighted notes in this document, but I want to publish these three for readers. I'll turn them on publicly. Um, it, it, primarily, it's the reporting tool, but it does also serve the, the, the purpose for the readers. Um, collaborate. Uh, as I mentioned before, it lets you bring in people in other newsrooms, um, either you know, figuratively or, or, or literally, um, to, to work with you on a project. If, uh, if you have a trove of uh, documents, uh, real estate transactions or court records that you're working on and you want um, somebody here at Thunderdome uh, to lend a hand, you can add us to that project and we can come into Document Cloud and see that uh, in the back end with you and work with you on it. Um, or you can have a reporter who's in a different uh, office from an editor, and they can go back and forth on it. It, it lets you interact on, around the, the document set. Um, this is, and I'll show you this in a few minutes, really one of the 
killer features for Document Cloud is it lets you analyze documents. Um, the whole concept behind this originally is, is sort of the old shoe leather investigative reporter, right? You, you know, I'm going to go and assemble piles of paper and I'm going to find the paper trail and I'm just going to scan it into my computer. Um, but what Document Cloud does is it starts to treat that um, more like data. It can go through um, your documents and start to pick out um, places and names and people and dates and try to give you a big picture view of what might be in this so you can start to think about where you want to target uh, your reporting. Um, you know, if you get handed 30,000 pages of uh, contracts, for instance, um, you could spend a few weeks going through them and, and in the long run you probably should, but you to get a head start, you can run an analysis in Document Cloud and it can try to find um, points of interest where you should start reading. Um, so if, if the, the juiciest tidbit about a certain developer you're looking for is on uh, the 800th page, you don't have to read the first 799 necessarily to get there. Um, you can publish uh, documents. And this is, I think this is the only overlap where you, you have with Scribd, um, at least that I'm aware of, is, is Document Cloud has built into it um, this this viewer um, that's easy, relatively easy to embed um, on your website. It's, it's easier on a lot of websites than some of ours, um, but in Saxa Tech, this is uh, possible. Um, there is a document cloud embed type. Um, there's also a way to use the iframe embed in Saxa Tech to put a document set um, into your articles um, or to, to go in with a story. Um, so yeah, document cloud says, Here's a set of documents I've been working with for six months. I've done all this re additional reporting and annotation. Now I want to publish just this one. It lets you do that. It also lets you publish just a single note um, that you put on there uh, and embed that into your story. Um, so the screenshot here, um, and I can show you the project. And, and I might have even mentioned this on our call last week. Where at the, when I was at the Star Ledger, our higher ed reporter had FOIA'd the contracts for the all 33, whatever they are, a public um, college presidents in New Jersey. We pulled all those documents in a document cloud and she went through and annotated them. And she could say here, um, you know, here in, in Peter Burnham's contract is exactly the spot where he is um, alleged to misspending his expense account funds. Um, you could go in and you can find where and flag it for readers with a note. Here's where the county has agreed to pay, um, the county community college has agreed to pay the um, private college tuition for each of the, the uh, president's children for the next six years. Um, you can start to point out these kind of smoking guns in a document. So you have it for the readers who really want to read every word, um, but you can help those who are looking for some context and looking for uh, um, just the head, head start, the bullet points, so to speak. Um, and kind of most uh, excitingly uh, after the analysis is you can show your work. You can really um, demonstrate, in addition to the story, you can put the raw materials in there, the, the primary sources. Um, and with the annotation, you can sort of publish everything and say, this is how we did this story. This is what we found in the documents. You too can go through and see um, these original uh, points in, in a contract or in an email conversation. Um, that uh, can really explain to a reader the depth of your reporting and, and what you've done to, to get these stories. Um, so let me show you a couple of examples of these last few in particular and then see kind of what questions you have from this overview and then we can walk through uh, Document Cloud itself a little bit. Um, and so I'm going to change this and hopefully you're still seeing my screen here all right. Um, you should see a picture from nj.com, um, which is the website for the Star Ledger. And I'll, I'll show you briefly what we did. This was one of our early uses of it. So this was about two and a half years ago, I guess. Um, this is the public contract story. And as you scroll down in it, um, let's see, apparently some of the pictures have broken since, uh, since then. Um, we put each contract for everyone. Chris, are you seeing this here? OK. Yeah, we've so you have uh, for every college, you can go to the college, you can see here, we made notes for the, what's the weird things in their contract, their housing allowance, um, 
Oh, here, yeah, here's Burnham's children. Of course, there's not. In an unusual perk, the college agreed, paid, agreed to pay up to 40 grand a year for his two children to attend the colleges of their choice. Um, I mean, that's a big difference between saying your children can have their tuition waived at the community college where you're the president. Um, that, that's pretty interesting. We've got uh, medical payments, sabbaticals written into the contracts. Um, I'm pretty sure somebody had a wife's uh, cosmetic surgery covered. Um, a lot of people have luxury cars in their contracts. If I were to redo this, the um, this presentation is a little overwhelming just in that there's 30 of these sets. Um, but I think the thing that we did do well is not only in presenting the, the sources, um, but with the notation. And you see when you open up a note here, um, it flags just the original line in the document. So if somebody can click through to that, you have a little bit of the annotation. And you can just say next, and it'll skip to the next note that you've pulled. So here it says, here's this uh, Russell Davis's salary was $180,000. Um, he was going to receive $20,000 in retirement if he remained with the college, an additional $20,000. Um, he was entitled to a new car every four years. Um, people can just tab through those, um, those individual notes. So this is a pretty common and really um, kind of easy use for Document Cloud. Obviously, it depends on you doing the reporting, um, but in terms of presenting this, um, this is pretty straightforward. Um, I'll show hey, you Tom, a quick question. Sure. Okay. Um, so yeah, I've used Scrib to do just single, like we had a FOIA request to the um, Department of Education and they responded they were denying and it was the reason why. So it was just a simple letter and we embedded that in an article. So would you recommend that you still use Scrib for something simple like that, just one page, or is Document Cloud easy to work with and it would be just as simple to use that as well? I would I would use Document Cloud for all documents, um, which I don't mean to sound as silly as it came out sounding, but um, <laughs> even if it's one page, I would put it in there because it serves the purpose also of the repository um, so that you may come back or you might have another reporter five years from now come back and search for the name of whoever's listed in that FOIA request and you want them to find that document. Um, with Scribd, it's a little bit more diffuse. Um, what Document Cloud is not good at, and I will say this, is um, images. It's not great at pictures. Um, it doesn't really help you any with pictures. It's not great with data. If you have a, a printout um, of an Excel spreadsheet, for instance, Document Cloud's probably not going to help you much with that. Um, but uh, transcripts, court records, emails, correspondence, FOIA letters, um, the, the real paper trail kind of stuff, I would put all of that. As a rule, personally, any document I touched as a reporter and editor, I would put in Document Cloud, whether or not I publish it. Um, and definitely anything that I publish, I would put in there. Um, mostly for that, you, you would start to get that snowball effect of six months from now or a year from now, you have tens of thousands of pages of documents and you could start to search across them and potentially later find leads that you didn't see the first time, um, particularly if it's an ongoing beat or an ongoing story. Does that help? Okay. Sure. One other quick, yeah, that does. And then what other quick, in terms of my PowerPoints, do you think I should use, still use Scribd or um, does Document Cloud work for PowerPoints or maybe look at- um, Are they, are they images? Other? Are they really text heavy? Um, it's a combination, um, yeah, really. I, if you're making to. them, I don't know, does PowerPoint have an, its own embed? I, so this, the slide deck I'm using, Michelle, is something called Haiku Deck. Um, that's really easy, okay. and um, it's an actually an iPad app that um, I'm pretty sure that has an embed to it, too. Yeah, it'll, it'll give you an embed. for. It's a little bit limited on, say, if you want to do a lot of text and how many bullet points. Um, I, I think if you've got a PowerPoint, especially if it's image heavy, I, you might still want to use Scribd for that or a different slide deck program that has a native embed to it. Okay, thanks. So let me show a couple of other quick examples of how organizations have used Document Cloud, um, sort of on the, the far end of the, the spectrum, and then we can look at it 
uh, itself. Um, so this is um, the Sarah Palin emails, and, and you probably uh, remember this, where uh, the AP, I think it was, and a couple other news organizations had FOIA'd all of her email correspondence when she was the governor of Alaska, and there was a big fight. They finally uh, relented, and I think under court order, and were um, released. So what they did is, Alaska basically, and I'm going to ballpark this, I want to say there were 60 or 70,000 pages of these printouts. Alaska said, okay, come on out. Um, here's a box of paper. Have at it. Um, and a couple of news organizations then you know, ran to Kinko's and bulk, bulk scanners, scanned all this in and put them up on Document Cloud. Um, and then the Times came back uh, with a more involved presentation. And this is basically a timeline of the highlights of their correspondent, her correspondence. And you could go through and see every single email if you want to. Um, but the Times offered you a way to sort of click through um, various time uh, points in time here at the top. Um, so I'm going to open this just a little bit more. Um, you know, if you just want to see uh, after the, the legislature passes her plan to expedite the gas pipeline, you could go see some of the correspondence around that time. Um, uh, you can see everything Sarah Palin, who she's writing to. And then they have notes along the side. You know, here's Palin on transparency in government. And it jumps to the note. Um, uh, you know, this is in response to an Anchorage Daily News story and, and so on. And along the right side, there's, you know, several dozen notes that they've flagged in here. Or I could just page through, like, every day of her administration um, and see what are the, um, uh, what is she writing about? Who is she talking to? Uh, it's, you can also um, search across all of them through Document Cloud. Um, if there's a specific somebody, um, uh, what's her name? Bristol? Am I, yeah. I don't know if I'm spelling that right. This is the running with scissors part. I haven't actually looked at this. So I search for Bristol and it pulls up. Here's uh, 97 days of email that Bristol was mentioned in some way uh, in her correspondence. Um, you know, Bristol uh, uh, had a ball. Um, you know, Bristol did this. Um, some of these probably not related to her daughter, but elsewhere too. Um, so that was one one thing. This is obviously a much more involved um, presentation. Uh, the Times did considerable amount of development work on that. Um, but at the heart of it is a way for their journalists as well as their readers to wrap their heads around this massive dump of documents and give people a way to search across it. Um, and then I'll show you one other quick example. Um, and this is also uh, really uh, exceptional. This is ProPublica. And they did a story, um, uh, some of their medical reporting. Um, and what they created is this thing called Explore Sources, which when you come to the story, you see this just looks like a regular article, right? You scroll down here, there's photos, and there's a few links, um, but it doesn't look like anything unusual. Um, but if I turn Explore Sources on, all of a sudden you get highlights. And basically, this is the annotated uh, story. You know, for everything that's highlighted, I can click on that and I get the document cloud note uh, of where they got this, this, uh, this fact from. Um, you know, the you know, what the on-call on doctor suggested. Well, that was on page 169 of this court record. Um, and it really let the readers, um, particularly ones who uh, were of in interested in it, see what was involved in the reporting behind it. And it sort of helps bullet pr bulletproof um, the their contentions in their story. You know, if you have a problem with the reporting, here's all the documents. Here's every fact and where they got it from. Um, it makes it hard for... Uh, you know, especially for investigations, for somebody to try to refute something like that. And again, this is also a very kind of sophisticated presentation, um, but it's built on top of, of the basic document cloud. Um, and, and I thought it was kind of a cool, uh, you know, journalistic transparency move here. So um, does anybody have any questions about what we've covered so far, or are you ready to go and take a look at Document Cloud itself? I'm ready to take a look. All right, excellent. Hearing no questions, I will uh, move on. So when I log into Document Cloud, um, which I've already done before we started here, um, I'm presented with this view. OK, 
Okay, basically this is all the documents that I've uploaded here. Um, I've got 166 in running and it shows me the first 10. Um, and if I click on, so a bunch of these are from the Newtown um, report uh, that came out from their attorney general's office a few weeks ago. So if I click on it, double click on any one of these, it opens up the document in a new window and we see what is here. Um, are you getting most of these in PDF form or are you scanning some or a combination? These all came in as PDFs. Um, there have definitely been projects where we've scanned them in ourselves. Um, and that's, it's, the quality is not um, as good, but Document Cloud can still help with that. Um, so that, that's actually a good opportunity for me to talk just briefly about um, what Document Cloud does with this when you upload a, a PDF. Um, so it's really great with the native PDFs um, where you can select the, the text in there and it can just read it. But what Document Cloud does is for every document that comes in, it creates a specific instance of that just for you in its database. So if there are 10 news organizations that are all uploading the Palin emails or, or the Michael Jackson autopsy report or whatever it is, you have your own specific version of that. So if, if another organization is... Um, is redacting things or they're adding notes, yours is not affected. Um, but Document Cloud brings that in. And I'm, to be honest, I, I'm, I'm not an expert in everything that happens in the processing, but in general, it's running that through an OCR program and extracting all the text out of that. Um, so it's, uh, it's basically scraping out the PDF. Depending on the quality of the scan, um, sometimes it works better than others. So you notice here, right here, um, it's the default is the image, but there are these tabs up here. I can hit pages and it shows me all the pages in a document set and I can click text. And what the text does is it just gives you the raw um, information that the document cloud is, that the document is a picture of. Um, so I have used this in instances where I get a transcript of some sort um, as a PDF and I need to try to get quotes out of it or I'm searching for something. Uh, I can click on the text tab and it will often help with that. So here you can say, this, it did a pretty good job with this. On 624.13, I was assigned to determine the total weight of guns, magazines, and ammunition carried by Adam Lanza. Um, this is an easy way to grab everything that's in there and copy that out for your reporting or whatever else. Um, so what it, and in doing that processing, that's what powers not only the ability to search across documents, um, but also some of the analysis um, capabilities that we're going we're gonna to look at here in a minute. Um, so we have this. And what we can do here, along the right-hand side, you see a bunch of options. So you see right now this is private access. This is something I uploaded um, but did not end up publishing, um, so I've kept that private for our reporting. Um, I can add public notes. I can add private notes. Um, I can make redactions. So I'll just go ahead and do this because um, this is pretty easy. To, oh, I can zoom in and out. I can make it bigger if it's easier to read. Um, if I find that there's something in here that is a uh, concern, um, uh, if, for instance, it's a court transcript that uses the name of uh, an, a sexual abuse victim, um, if it's somebody's social security number or private information, um, we can go through, go in and redact it simply by drawing a black box over it. Um, and when you save that, it redacts it from the image of the document. It also takes it out of the text. Um, so when you publish it, nobody can search for it. Nobody can see it. Um, it is gone, though. It, it, I don't know that you can undo the redactions. Um, but in instances where you want to put out an entire document set, but you have any concerns about uh, privacy, it lets you handle that. Um, let's see, edit the document information. I can put all kinds of metadata in with my document. So just for my own record keeping, I can explain, I can write who the source is. I can say this came from the Connecticut, um, Connecticut States Attorney Office. Um, I can write a description, any kind of narrative um, about that. I can explain sort of what the background is. I can put in the URLs for articles that might be about this or any article that came off the reporting. And the 
they really like you to put the published URL if you make it public so that somebody can, um, you can see where these are actually ending up. I can set the access level. level. Um, right now it's private, so that means it's only private to me, but I could change it um, to private to my organization. Um, I could say, say it's private to a certain group of users. Um, you can even change the language if you're getting documents for whatever reason in German uh, or Spanish. Um, it can help with that. Um, I can, you know, I can also delete it altogether. Um, a few other things that it that it lets you do. You know, sometimes you scan things in. Sometimes the if you're scanning a set of documents, pages might be out of order. One page might be upside down. One page might not have come through very well, and you want to scan it again at a higher quality. Um, it lets you deal with all that. I can reorder the pages. I can say. You know, these two need to be reversed to be in the right order. I can say, you know what, page three did not come through well. Let me scan it again and put in a new page three, and it'll let you do that uh, directly. Um, it really lets you organize that with the, with the whole goal, of course, that this is for the reporting, but it definitely benefits the presentation and the reader down the road. Um, so there's a lot right there, and it, it lets you also embed uh, the embed tools are over here. Depending on how you use it uh, in your CMS, um, you can embed the whole document and you go through a few steps of a widget and it gives you um, the embed code or there's also a URL there that you can use for an iframe um, if you want to use that, that solution. So that's just one document. I have hundreds in here and it also lets me... Um, lets me group them together um, into projects. So for instance, we have the Archdiocese of LA clergy files. This is a bunch of stuff that somebody from Lang had um, pulled together for a story and, and she wanted to work with us on. I could pull this into one folder, essentially, this project, and just share it directly with that journalist. Um, so that way, if, if you if you want to collaborate across newsrooms, it's an easy way to share just a specific subset of it. Um, of your documents. Um, for instance, we have the James Holmes emails um, from the Aurora shootings. We have a, a lot of stuff from Sandy Hook shootings. Um, we have something here from the, the Hecker trial um, that our, our colleagues in St. Paul covered a few years ago. Um, so one thing I want to show you, and, and I mentioned this a little bit before, is the analysis piece of it, um, which is when I first saw this, I was completely blown away because it hadn't really um, occurred to me. So I have this project here with the, just these three documents. And this was a trial of a big time businessman and developer in St. Paul um, who ended up had embezzled millions of dollars um, from various agencies. And uh, it was a really high profile story that they covered for about a year and a half, actually. And these are just some of the court records um, when his case first came to light. Um, so if I want to do an analysis here, I can do view entities. Um, and you should see this now. This is a, what it does is since when it scans in your documents and it does all that text processing, it's also running a bunch of algorithms to pull out um, things like names and places and dates. Um, and so if I'm interested in uh, you know, William Prohofsky's connection to the Hecker trial, um, I, I can just go to this analysis, right? And it says there's 20, it found 26 people, at least 26 people in this, in just this first document, okay? And if I go to any point on here, and I hover on it, it starts to show me where those people are. It says William Prohofsky, okay, here on page 17, here's the exact citation in the document where he's mentioned. You know, on page 17, it find, it knows that Prohofsky is, is just you know, just the last name for the same guy. Um, this is one that also kind of blew me away. It knows here that his is referring to Prohofsky. Um, it can, it's doing analysis of all the sentences in a document, so it knows what everything is referring to. Um, so I don't even have to look for just, if I just search for the name Prohofsky across the document set, I'm not going to get all the instances. Um, this is, starts to surface more of that. Um, and when you're dealing with really big 
document dumps, um, this definitely helps to find uh, where you should be looking. Um, uh, and it does this for 26 different people in, in here. There's somebody named Nelson that is finding, oh, Magistrate Judge Nelson, and it's finding uh, references to, to him in each of these cases. Um, uh, it's also finding places, United States Bankruptcy Court, the Mirage Hotel, uh, you know, they Hecker, Rowan, and their children stayed at the Mirage Hotel and Casino. Their lodging bill totaled more than $7,000. Um, you know, that's the kind of tidbit that would catch my attention as a reporter covering a case, and I would want to jump to that page and read more. That sounds very uh, intriguing. Um, and it also picks out um, concepts and terms that are repeated over and over again, and that might be of interest, particularly in a um, embezzlement and fraud trial. Um, you know, we see search warrants, uh, insurance proceeds, um, financial accounting, um, personal piggy bank. Oh, that looks exciting. Uh, meanwhile, according to many witnesses, he used each of his businesses as his own personal piggy bank, draining them of needed resources and financing his high flying lifestyle. I mean, that right there is a lead quote if I've ever seen one um, on a first day story. And I haven't even actually looked at the document yet. I just pressed one button and it starts to find these things to help me figure out where to start looking. Um, and it does it for each of the documents in this project. Um, so things are a little different. In this one, there's a lot more places mentioned. There's a store, there's a lake. Um, you know, it's Memorial Day, so it's not perfect. Um, the algorithm is not foolproof. Um, and sometimes it, it might get, uh, it's not gonna catch everything, but it gives you a heck of a head start um, you know, if you're, especially if you're competing another against another news organization and they're sitting down with a pile full of printouts in front of them, are going to try to read through it. This really at least helps you target some of your reporting, um, when you need to, um, oh, it pulls out email addresses, phone numbers, cities, states. Um, it, this is incredible. I had no idea that, um, you know, something like this was even possible. And it kind of changed the way I thought about, uh, about document reporting when I, when I learned about this, th these features. Another thing it does um, is a timeline, which is also kind of cool. If I click the analyze the view timeline, what it does is it goes through each document and it pulls out dates um, and puts them, uh, puts them on an actual timeline. And when you click on any date in here, it shows you the reference from the document and uh, highlights the date that's mentioned. Um, so if you want to try to start to construct a chronology um, from the events in some sorted case, um, this, this gives you a pretty good start. Um, again, it's not perfect, but it's pretty good. Um, and you notice that these are not in any kind of order. Um, they're in, I should say, they're in chronological order. So on page 29, they finds the date January 6, 2010. Um, but then on page one, it has July 16th, 2010. It knows where to put things here. And it's saying, here are the, here are the dates, that, the range of events that are covered in each of these documents. So if I'm particularly interested in something that happened in a, in a, in a, in a contract or in a court hearing at a specific time frame, um, this can help me start to jump in there. Um, this can help me know, like, sort of, where's the where's the spot on this page? Um, you know, which page in the document, what spot in the page should I start um, start to look around? Tom, question: Could you sure. then embed that timeline in your story, um, or would it be best to create a separate timeline on your own? Um, I would make a separate timeline because. Um, like I said, the algorithm is not perfect. So sometimes this might pick up things that um, are slightly off. Um, I don't think this is publication ready, but it's a great reporting tool. Okay. Um, and you'll notice one other thing you can do here is I can drag um, across an area and it'll zoom in. So if there's a whole bunch of dates that are mentioned close together, I can zoom in adjust that section um, to try to break them up and make it a little easier to examine them. Any other questions about any of these features? The analysis, the, the 
the entities or the timeline. Um, okay. Well, I, I think this is a uh, this is pretty um, remarkable feature here, and like I said, something that would never have occurred to me. But when I see how it does it, it's pretty impressive. Um, and I'll just show you a couple of notes um, that that we put into this document. Uh, I'm pretty sure these are just um, examples. But so when I clicked on this first document in the project, notice also when I'm looking at it um, here. It shows me these little sticky tab kind of uh, views. So when even when I'm just looking at all the documents in my project, I can see which ones have notes on them. Um, so on this Hecker indictment, the yellow one is something that's a public note. You know, we flagged this. Um, Mary Jo Webster, here's the reporter. She added this annotation. This is something that we could publish directly um, just with this uh, embed link. Um, I can also make notes in here too. Uh, so yeah, I can embed this this note directly, and it'll walk me through a widget to give me that code. Um, and then the blue one is here's a private note. Um, you know, th he did not stop. This is referring to when he refused the breathalyzer test, according to this sergeant uh, on this interview date. Um, you know, if if I'm just for my my reporting to collect all this stuff. This is something that when we publish the document that that will not be displayed to readers, um, but I'll have all this in the back end in Document Cloud. And let's go back here to the main page. So a couple other things I wanna mention and then I wanna um, see what other questions you have or, or, or sort of give you some, um, point you in the direction to get started. Um, you can see here that at the top, um, I have my documents is one option. This is sort of the default when I log in. It shows me all the documents I have in the system. Um, I can look at just my published documents. So these are the, of the 166 that I've uploaded. I've only published four. Um, but if I'm looking for something specifically, you know that that ended up embedded somewhere on one of our articles, or um, I, I can get that. Um, I can look at all the documents in my newsroom. Um, since I'm an administrator, um, these are documents that are public, that each of my colleagues here have published publicly. Um, so if, the, if somebody has a private document, I, I wouldn't be able to see that uh, in their system. But if I'm looking for something another reporter in my newsroom is working on, um, I can see what's public within my media or my news organization. None of that is viewable to any other news organization unless you share it explicitly with them. Um, so uh, it, it, this is just sort of the newsroom document uh, bank kind of idea that uh, we can all share stuff just within our own newsrooms, but it's not out in the world um, uh, unless we want it to be. Uh, and then I have the Oakland Press's documents. Charlie um, had added me as a collaborator. So I see a lot of you already have accounts set up here, um, which is great. Um, and then there's all documents. Now this is everything that's in Document Cloud that has been made um, public. Uh, so I can see what other news organizations have um, that they have that they're not holding privately, I guess. And I can search across it. So um, if I search for Michael Jackson, I'm wondering what this will tell me. Um, so here's every document that any news organization has put in. Um, I guess it looks like it has either the words Jackson um, or Michael in it. Uh, but the first one is Michael Jackson's will. Michael Jackson's estate letter to MSNBC. Um, and I can go look at that. Now, I cannot, um, I can't publish this. I don't have permission or access to publish this on my site. Um, but sometimes if there's national stories, um, it can help to be able to see what sort of documents are, are flowing around that, um, that people have put into the system. Um, I have another question. What if you did sure. a screenshot of that document? Is that ethical or not? No, definitely not. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's, uh, I think you would have to go to the source and get your own copy of the document. 
uh, I wouldn't I would not publish somebody else a screenshot of somebody else's document. Um, so this Michael Jackson issue gets to an interesting use case that also hadn't occurred to me until I saw the LA Times do it, which is the LA Times, and again, I'm running with scissors, but let me see if I can find it, um, has a really interesting philosophy in that they sort of publish documents on their own, like all the time, um, you know, at least several times a week. And if you go here, um, and just here's the document. And sometimes, look, this is an old page um, of when there was a flood in, in City Hall, I guess. Um, but they do really well with this. Um, you know, my ph philosophy had always been, you get a document, I'm going to write a brief and put the brief up with the document, and then I'm going to write a story and put the document with that. And you can do all that piece too, but what the LA Times does a lot, especially with really significant um high interest news uh, kind of documents, they'll just put that up. They put up the well, some some court record for Michael Jackson and it got, all they did was put it in Document Cloud and embed that in its, an article by itself with a headline, like no reporting or writing. They got like 100,000 page views in five hours um, because it was out there. Like they were there, they had it early and the document itself was so newsworthy. Um, that they could put that out while they were working on other stories. Um, and then, they, you know, they later embedded it in a lot of other reporting. Um, but the document itself uh, served, had a lot of value um, for readers on the internet. So the one, um, the one thing that is a caveat in working with Document Cloud is that because of the way it processes um, the PDFs that you upload, that can take some time. Um, and it's something to consider in your workflow. Um, depending on the time of day and depending on uh, how many other organizations are uploading things, um, it can take, uh, especially for larger document sets, half an hour to an hour for something to process. Um, if you have one or two pages and it's a slow news day, you know, it'll take a minute or two. Um, but you want to keep in mind that if especially if it's something really um, uh, that's publicly known, you know, like the Newtown Attorney General's report um, is a great example. Something where like a lot of organizations are going to probably be getting this and we're all going to be putting it in a document cloud. That took a lot of time because it was also 30 different files um, that were hundreds and thousands of pages uh, each. Um, so generally what I try to do is anytime we get a document, the very first thing I do is put it into Document Cloud, and while it's processing, we can, you know, get every all the other wheels in motion, so that when it's done, we can immediately go online, um, rather than doing the reporting and then put, putting it in Document Cloud to publish on the back end, because that might take too much time. Um, it's not ideal, but I think the trade-off for um, the reason it takes so long is because you get your own individual private instance of it, and it's doing all that scraping and analysis um, to let you search across your documents and to do some of that uh, entity extraction that I think it's a, a fair trade-off. So questions. What do you think? Is this, is this what you expected to see? Um, any surprises or any, any features you want to... Uh, you want me to go through again or ask any other questions about? There is a question from Charles here. Um, how long does it take docs to upload into DocCloud? Um, like I said, it, that really depends. Most of the time, it's pretty quick. And there is a feature that um, basically it's a checkbox when you're uploading something. It says notify me when this is ready. Um, so usually what you can do is um, click the new document. You find the document on your machine. And of course, I don't have any PDFs handy. Uh, that was an oversight. Um, then you give it the information. You tell it, um, this is the name of my document. This is the source of it. Um, click and click the checkbox. Email me when this is ready. Um, and it'll, uh, then you can sort of walk away and go do other pieces of your reporting. Um, but just be prepared that especially if it's a big 
document you're trying to upload or if there's potentially other news organizations um, in the system that it will take. Nothing's broken if it takes 45 minutes for you to get a thousand page document back. Um, you, you need to sort of build that in sometimes. Um, and for breaking news, that can be a challenge, um, but it's, it's never been a deal breaker uh, for me. It's always helped out. Um, we've also done, uh, again, at the Star Ledger, we did a project where we had sued the New Jersey State, was it the New Jersey Stadium and Entertainment Authority, uh, which runs the Meadowlands, basically a giant stadium. Um, for their contracts because it's a um, quasi-public agency um, that was negotiating deals to bring Britney Spears and Cirque du Soleil and Bruce Springsteen to play at the stadium. So we wanted those, and it took three years for us to get them. Um, and when they did, of course, like we got a call from a lawyer at 4 o'clock on a Friday afternoon that said, come pick up this box of paper. Um, and there was 30,000 pages in there, but um, we just got a bulk scanner, and we scanned everything in a document cloud. And then we did stories for weeks and weeks after that out of there, um, you know, stories about the weird, the weird things that rock bands ask for on their riders. We did stories about like everybody loves Bruce Springsteen, but even when he sells out Giant Stadium for eight nights, it costs the state money. Like he's getting paid so much that nobody makes any money on that except for him. Um, there was so much there that the, the little bit of legwork of of uploading all that stuff totally paid off. Um, any other questions? So well, it looks like uh, you, a lot of you already have accounts um, there. Uh, when I say find your key master, I, I guess I meant find who's your newsroom administrator. I'm pretty sure that that's uh, Charlie Crum. So um, he can set you up. Um, and then once you have your login, it, it just start uploading your PDFs in there. Um, uh, and Michelle had asked, you know, about the, the scanning versus the native PDFs. I mean, I think ideally you have a, a something um, that's already a PDF, but if you have to scan it, don't let that be a deterrent. Um, the the text translation won't be perfect, um, but it will. Uh, it's still worthwhile. Um, and you can still do all the annotation on top of it, um, no matter how bad the scan is. Um, so some help. Uh, I am going to, and I think it's at the end of the slide, there's a link to a number of uh, other resources for cheat sheets. Um, we did a live chat here at Thunderdome back in the spring um, with a couple of folks from IRE and the developer for Document Cloud. Um, about how uh, how they train people to use it. Um, there are a lot of resources on there. Um, and if you're absolutely stuck with something, um, support at documentcloud.org. Um, they are incredibly uh, supportive and accessible. Um, I think I kind of drive them crazy in that I call, email, I'll find them on Skype and instant message them. Um, and they've always been really responsive and helpful when I'm stuck with an issue or you know, if there's something wrong with the system or whatever, they're always really on top of things. Um, and, and of course, you can always uh, ask us for help uh, here in the data team at Thunderdome. Um, we, uh, we love to help with these kind of things. We're always excited about this kind of reporting um, and some of these tools um, that sort of really help make our jobs uh, easier. Um, and this, the firepower that Document Cloud provides. So uh, if I can ever lend a hand, please reach out to me. Um, uh, obviously, you can always ask Charlie. He can send you my way, or you can come to me directly. We're at Twitter, um, on Twitter, at DFM Data, and also data-desk, uh, uh, data-desk at digitalfirstmedia.com. That will hit uh, all of us um, on the team. So if there's some question and I'm not around, uh, one of the other folks here can, can lend a hand too. Um, any other questions before we wrap up? I, you know, we actually went a couple minutes, uh, a few minutes over the 45, but I, I feel like we covered a lot of ground. Any other questions? All right. Um, I'll leave you with this, um, this link bit.ly slash DFM doc cloud, um, is just a bundle of, uh, of those links that, that I mentioned in it. 
actually show them to you here. Um, bit.ly dfn doc cloud. And so it, you have the slide deck here. Um, this is the uh, link to the introduction and the documentation on their website. Um, this is a blog post uh, that we did at Inside Thunderdome that also has our live video chat um, with the folks from Document Cloud. Um, all right, and actually that's down here too. And there's this cheat sheet, which is super helpful. And of course it's in Document Cloud. Um, but this is, I think just two, oh, okay. Eight pages with screenshots um, of exactly how, where do you log in? What button do you hit to upload something? Um, what kind of fields do you need to fill out? Uh, this is all in here. Um, and and it's is super helpful that Jamie Dowdle, the training director at IRE, put that together um, actually for our live chat, I think. Um, so bit.ly slash DFM doc cloud um, should hopefully be a one stop for all, all the resources you need. Um, and I guess I, I'll just, unless there are any other questions, um, I'll thank you for giving me a little time. And once you start using this, um, let me know. I'd love to see what you do with it.